हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस इकोनॉमिक सर्वे 2017-18 डिस्कशन फ्रॉम प्रोटेल एंड आई एस अकेडमी वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग यू सर्टन वीडियोस रिलेटेड टू दिस इकोनॉमिक सर्वे एज वेल एज फॉर द बजट हियर दिस इज अवर सेकेंड वीडियो इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो वे टॉक अबाउट द टेन न्यू फैक्ट्स ऑफ अवर इंडियन इकोनॉमी आई होप यू मस्ट वॉच दैट दिस इज अवर सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन इकोनॉमिक सर्वे नाउ इकोनॉमिक सर्वे turns out to be one of the very important part for an upsc gpsc aspirant you have to you can say go through this because this document talks about the current condition of indian economy and more importantly what are the various you can say factors which are affecting this indian economy someone who reads economic survey thoroughly will get to know that this particular document will give you a good round about how indian economy is working the problem with the economic survey sometimes would be that it is lot of data packed and many of you may have certain trouble in terms of deciphering this data and that is the purpose why we are talking about this economic survey and giving you a perspective from an exam point of view i'm sure that you are aware that in prelim examination there are many questions of general studies coming through economic survey whether it is of economic issue or a social issue or a policy issue or a program issue all of them may be part and parcel coming from economic survey and therefore it is very crucial for a serious candidate to go through this economic survey economic survey of india was presented this year by arvind subramaniam who is a chief economic advisor जिनका फोटोग्राफ आपको यहाँ पे दिख रहा है ठीक है दिस इकोनॉमिक सर्वे इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू वॉल्यूम्स वॉल्यूम वन एंड वॉल्यूम टू फ्रॉम योर एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दैट इज यूपीएससी एंड जीपीएससी एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वॉल्यूम टू वुड बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑब्वियसली वॉल्यूम वन विल गिव अ ब्रॉडर ओवर इट इज बेसिकली अ काइंड ऑफ बर्ड्स आई व्यू अबाउट हाउ दी थॉट प्रोसेस ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इज गोइंग ऑन राइट नाउ दैट इज बींग प्रेजेंटेड दैट okay but while volume 2 gives hard facts gives proper correlation about why a particular thing is happening and why a particular thing is not happening so our efforts are to give you overview about this economic survey chapter by chapter so that you can understand what is very critical part about this entire you can say economic survey remember chapter number 1 would be the most critical because it covers the entire aspect of indian economy therefore this will be little longish and will have you can say large amount of data in it we will try to give you proper understanding about this data okay let me start with overview of our indian economy survey indian economy survey says that gdp growth is expected to be 6.75 percentage in 2018 19 this is very important okay gdp is going to grow at this percentage predicted gdp for financial year 19 that is 1920 would be 7 to 7.5 percentage so that means it says that this year's gdp would possibly not grow at the desired rate which everyone of us must be expecting हम सब लोग एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं कि भाई सात परसेंट आठ परसेंट से अपना कंट्री ग्रो करे ओके सात आठ परसेंट से जीडीपी ग्रो करे दैट इज व्हाट आवर एक्सपेक्टेशन वुड बी ध्यान रहे जीडीपी का ग्रोथ इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ डेवलपिंग कंट्री लाइक इंडिया क्योंकि जीडीपी इज बेसिकली नेशनल इनकम अगर वो ग्रो करेगी दैट मीन्स पीपल लाइक यू एंड मी हमारी इनकम ग्रो करेगी That is basically the idea. Okay, so the expectation was that 2018-19 ka GDP growth should be there. So it is not expected to grow at a very high rate. It is going to grow at quite less rate, which is less than seven percentage. Even though uh, you can say with lesser percentage of growth, India is among the best performing economies in the world. It is expected the world may possibly grow at four percentage. while india is obviously growing at a better rate but out of the you can say best performing economies india is one of them in addition to that inflation that is cpi based inflation 
consumer price index based inflation is going to remain at some around 3.2 percentage so that means it is saying it will be you can say in control remember inflation target is the work of an rbi they try to put their monetary policy on a regular basis and through that they control it now that this growth has been achieved in certain scenario why such good growth occurred by there is a lower inflation lower inflation is good for country at large why because the prices are not rising okay so that is good but at the same time a reasonable amount of inflation is desired with a reasonable amount of you can say inflation there is more and more economic activities are possible also there is an improved current account balance current account balance has improved in a good way and there is a notable reduction in a fiscal deficit to gdp ratio so there is a fiscal deficit to gdp ratio has decreased remember fiscal deficit has not decreased the ratio of fiscal deficit to gdp has reduced okay so in this scenario the growth could be considered positive as presented by sri arvind subramanian okay so here he said there are certain achievements of india what are the important achievements number 1 that country has introduced one of the big reform called gst gst is a difficult thing to manage in terms of administration level as well as execution level here it is you can say implemented in india obviously with certain you can say hiccup but that's a good achievement of this years you can say government then there's a twin balance sheet problem twin balance sheet problem is a big issue for our country so what happens in a twin balance sheet problem the twin balance sheet is banks are giving loan to companies okay so there is a bank when they are giving loan to the other you can say companies this other companies let's say some of the other way they are not able to make profit and they are loss making due to their loss making they are unable to repay the loan of the banks and thereby banks balance sheet will also show negative so there are twin balance sheet one is of company other is of the other is of the bank okay that is called twin balance sheet problem the idea of this twin balance sheet was coined by our chief economic advisor shri arvind subramanian so that is called twin balance sheet problem he mentioned in the economic survey that it is very important to give a resolution to this twin balance sheet problem how do you give this resolution there are two methods to be attacked and thereby you try to reduce this problem one of them is called recapitalization of banks so what is the meaning of recapitalization of bank giving additional funding by the government to the banks that is called recapitalization so there has been some around 2.11 lakh crore rupees has been provided by government for this recapitalization of bank in the next two years remember in last 10 years government has already spent more than 1.5 lakh crore rupees for recapitalization of bank and still it is continued okay so it may be it may be inefficiency of bank which is supported by the government agreed so one is banks which are in a problem we are not bothered in, in this discussion whether the banks are efficient or not but there is one solution being provided second solution is the companies which are loss making which have become insolvent and bankrupt how do we make that insolvency and bankruptcy very clean so that the companies which have given them loan okay will get certain benefits out of those you can say insolvency so that is called insolvency and bankruptcy code this two methods are attacking the problem of twin balance sheet and it is expected that it may give very good results number 3 for further liberalization of fdi fdi is a foreign direct investment it is very crucial for country like india to get lot of funding investment is very crucial for the growth of indian economy and for that we need money coming from india as well as from outside and that money which is coming from outside we want it to be liberalized measure so recently we liberalized this fdi in a big way and therefore allowing foreign companies to invest possibly 100 percentage in most of the sectors 100 percent full money to be provided and then they become the full owner of that particular company in india remember fdi is very important and good for country because thereby 
foreign company is putting money in Indian land, plants, machineries, labor and thereby more and more economic activities are happening in our Indian economy. So FDI is very important. Okay. With this Air India disinvestment is also proposed. Okay. Export uplift from the global recovery that is also a positive thing. Global recovery started in the last couple of years that the all world economies have started to you can say recover from recession and thereby more and more activities started when more activities started our Indian exports got advantage of that okay also our I guess, achievement was that sovereign rating sovereign rating provided by let's say Moody's and Standard and Poor they gave a good rating for India in the last 14 years for the first time India has improved from BAA3 to BAA2 so that's a good achievement by you can say Indian economy in the last year and one of the very important part that Indian economy has a strong foreign exchange reserve to the tune of 414 billion possibly the highest so far so these are the achievements of our Indian economy okay now let's talk about what are the factors which will affect the improvements in 2018-19 so we talked about this is what we achieved now we talk about what are the you can say factors which will impact Indian economy in the next year so the impacting factors are number one the crude oil prices they will create lot of trouble if the crude oil prices are going to go up the trickle down effect of higher prices जब ये prices ऊपर चढ़ेगी तो उसकी जो effect है trickle down ठीक है कि जिसके वजह से बाकी सब चीजें costly हो जाएगी ठीक है so that is going to create certain trouble so it is expected that the prices are going to rise ठीक है going by the recent trend average crude oil prices could be in the vicinity of 56 to 57 per barrel ठीक है in the current financial year and it is further going to go by 10 to 15 percentage so that is going to go in a reasonably challenging so this will affect you can say uh, Indian economy because prices are going to grow up okay number one number two our growth is also like to see certain improvements because we have done certain reforms in last year and in the previous year so one of them was GST GST is for sure will become stable now and the initial hiccup tha, wo to khatam ho jayega agle ek saal ke andar wo bahut stable ho jayega so therefore uske wajah se kya hoga people have a clarity ki bhaiya economy kaise aage badhegi theek hai taki kya hoga investment ka level badhega theek hai aur jo jo bhi dusre structural reform kar rahe hai jaise humne dekha recapitalization of bank as well as this you can say insolvency and bankruptcy court all this will give lot of benefit and therefore our economic performance will witness an improvement in 2018-19 is this is what they are expecting so this is what the factors affecting improvements in 2018-19 okay so considering these factors considering that India has developed certain structural systems and number two that few in future there are certain you can say uh, improvements in terms of pricing and thereby it is expected that Indian economy would have an improvement in 2018-19 okay so let's now talk about how this GDP growth is being projected in 17-18 by economic survey it says that GDP which is averaging at 7.5 percentage between 14-15 to 16-17 karibar दो सालों के अंदर एवरेज इंडिया का जीडीपी 7.5 परसेंट के आजबाजू रहा। Although growth is expected to decline in this, you can say 17-18, it is going to reach to 6.5 percentage. It is going to bringing the four-year average of 7.3, so that's a average of 7.3, ठीक है? But it will be significantly better than the other economies. So let us compare which are the other economies. So other economies are this. Okay. So world is going to grow at 3.4 percentage. Look at India. Average Indian growth rate between 14, 17, 3 years time, it is 7.3. It is far more better than China and obviously the other advanced economies and European economies. Okay. So this is what basically a growth rate. Okay. Now let's understand 
this scenario through a complete report card of India. So let's talk about the report card. Let me show you this in a bigger font. Okay. So this is what the GDP. I'm I'm sure this is visible to you. Okay. So this is first and foremost GDP values. Okay. GDP. So GDP at a constant market price. Okay. Look at the amounts. It is giving us an information that 14-15 it grew at 7.5 percentage. Okay. In 15-16 it grew at 8 percentage. 16-17 it grew at 7.1 and 17-18 6.5. It is going to go down. Okay, in 1718, is this is what they are saying, and GVA at the constant price. Okay, also the growth rate is quite less. Now we talk about per capita income. Look at this pricing. In around 1415, it was at 86,000 rupees, and now 111,000 rupees. That's an improvement for India. Look at the other scenario. Our WPI inflation has remained two or three percentage range, while CPI. Earlier in 14-15 it was very high. Now it has remained stable. Our exports are also showing certain growth. Compared to that, imports are showing higher growth. So that means it is going to create certain kind of trouble. Let me show you a few more things like exports, money related aspect and other data. Okay. So here it talks about how this you can say exports. So you see, so exports is growing at around 12 percentage while imports are going to grow by some around 21 percentage. We just saw that our foreign exchange reserve is very high, some around 400, you can say billion dollar. To that, there is a negative aspect called current account deficit. Our current account deficit is negative. So whatever we are earning in a year and the kind of expense we are making, okay, so that is negative. So that is minus one point, you can say eight. Look at our gross fiscal deficit. Okay, gross fiscal deficit is generally expected to be below 3 percentage. Remember that gross fiscal deficit is a big problem. Having it to be more than 3 percentage is a negative aspect for a country. In fact, anything against having a fiscal deficit is a negative for our country. Our finance ministry targets that it should be less than 3 percentage. Okay, so this year it is going to grow up and crossing the 3.5. 2 percentage and also and that is also estimate and in reality it could be more and then there is a revenue deficit and primary deficit is also mentioned. Ek cheez yaad rakhe, ye jo fiscal deficit, revenue deficit and primary deficit ye aise jo bhi terms hai, hum usko abhi detail mein describe nahi kar rahe. There are additional videos available. You can very well watch those. There is a special video available called fiscal deficit. You can very well watch that. There is another video available called GDP. You can very well watch that and get complete idea about what is the meaning to this kind of stuff. Okay, let me start. So this is what the indicators of India. Okay, let's further know. Together. So this is how our GDP is moving. Okay, so you see the real GDP and nominal GDP. Real GDP meaning to that is it is based on the constant prices. Okay, this is based on the constant price. It doesn't connect any inflation in it. So this is primarily movement of economic activities while the, the nominal figures are primarily affected by inflation. Okay. So now this range, this range talks about that inflation is reasonably stable and it is going to continue at a stable rate only. Okay. So this is how the quarterly growth rate of GDP mentioned. So let's talk about this GVA growth in the major sector. Remember, this GDP is basically coming through three sectors, primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. So we are talking about now how these three sectors have performed. So as expected, agriculture sector has registered significant higher growth compared to previous year, primarily because of we have a normal monsoon this year and manufacture sector has showed certain improvement. So let me show data. So this is GVA, GVA at a basic price out of which there is agriculture, there is industry and then there is services. Okay. So look at this agriculture. There is an improvement which is happening, but overall you can say by in quarter two, it has gone down. Industries, there is a obviously an improvement in the quarter two, but quarter one, it has gone down. Consistent effect is coming through services. Consistent effect is coming through services. So 
overall if we talk about the improvement is coming through services number one and it is expected that agriculture in quarter three and quarter four will definitely give us good boost to our gdp figures so now with this gdp we talk about what is per capita income improvement we just saw that the real per capita income is one of the very important indicator representing welfare of the people in our country so it has gone to some around 1 lakh 11 thousand you can say rupees per person it was started with some around 77 thousand rupees it has reached to 1 lakh 11 thousand rupees so that means that's a good growth for the people it is expected that indian economy should have better per capita income okay so now with this understanding of per capita income and the other indicator now we talk about what are the certain components of gdp and how these components have improved we saw gdp component through the in economic sector which is primary secondary and tertiary that is agriculture industries and services now we'll look this gdp from an expenditure angle and what are the figure we get this is an equation of gdp which is coming through expenditure method okay so this c is talking about consumption consumption is of private people this is about investment of private people this is government expenditure and investment both and this is net export and import okay so here the gdp is affected by this four parameters so in this four parameter consumption expenditure has been the major driver okay so it is accounting to more than 60 percentage of gdp growth in our economy okay so contribution is increased to over 95 percentage in 16 17 which is one of the very important part so private final consumption and government final consumption they have also improved okay why government expenditure has also improved this is mainly due to payment of higher wages and salaries to the government staffs because of seventh pay commission okay so this is the reason why it is happening okay so let me remind one more time ye hai bhaiya gdp ka formula consumption private people like you and me we are consuming okay hamara investment government ka expenditure and investment and net export import so this is together brings gdp aur usme growth kiska zyada hai consumption ka zyada hai sarkar ka bhi aur private ka bhi okay it is expected ki investment ka bhi growth bada ho remember hamara import नेगेटिव दिखाएगा यहां पे अगर हम ज्यादा इंपोर्ट करेंगे तो इट विल इंपैक्ट इन अ वेरी बैड वे सो लेट्स गेट इनटू टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ प्राइवेट कंजम्पशन एक्सपेंडिचर इज प्रोवाइडेड सो प्राइवेट कंजम्पशन सबसे ज्यादा किस चीज का हो रहा है सो प्राइवेट कंजम्पशन अगर आप देखें सर्विसेज हैज रिमेन अ काइंड ऑफ 46 47% नंबर ठीक है व्हाइल नॉन ड्यूरेबल नंबर्स आर रिमेन इन द रेंज ऑफ सम अराउंड 40 41% ठीक है while you can say semi durable goods and durable goods have changed so durable goods there is a small improvement while services there is a small improvement so that is how this consumption have improved so with this consumption improvement let me go and talk about how savings and investments are improving so saving rates are not very positive saving rates in india because of certain you can say problems in the last few years in terms of let's say demonetization as well as gst saving rates were not good investment rates are declining but their rate of declining is quite better than the you can say uh, rate of you can say savings so decline in investment is faster and therefore it is resulting in current account deficit investment kam ho raha hai kharcha zyada ho raha hai aur kharche zyada hone ki wajah se current account deficit is negative current account deficit is negative look at this data what is investment rate in 11 12 it was 39 percentage it has rapidly declined to 33 percentage what was the saving rate 34.6 percentage it has reduced but it has only reached to 32.3 percentage remember it is very important for country like india to have this investment rate to be growing at a very higher rate with more investment there is a good possibility that indian economic activities will improve okay saving will not have 
that much power of improving economic activity while investment will have a huge power of improving economic there is a direct correlation that investment will definitely improve economic activity though there is a direct correlation with savings and growth in indian economy but the rate of growth is coming in a better way through investments okay so let's talk about the saving issues so why the savings and investments were not growing in a big way what are the reasons so there are a number of factors number one is difficulties in acquiring land lands are creating more trouble delayed in cumbersome environmental clearances environmental clearances were not easily available and there are infrastructural problems so although many of these problems have been addressed and resulting in improved power situation lessening of infrastructure bottlenecks so there may be a possibility that in investment rate may go up in future okay so this is what the gross saving as a percentage of gdp this is the saving part here this uh, orange part is household part okay which is in the financial sector this is household in the physical sector in the green part this is a private corporate people or public public saving is quite less that is the government saving is quite quite less private corporate companies ka saving as a contribution to the gdp is also quite less what is more is household physical and household financial but that is decreasing okay but household financial is increasing in a big way so let's talk about household financial saving as a percentage of gdp household financial the money to be kept in currency deposits other or in a financial savings so look at this numbers so in others it is growing in a big way so that means indian people are now slowly and slowly moving towards structural markets and through this structural market this money is coming into formal economy so coming to this formal economy it is going to give advantage but as i mentioned what is necessary investment that is more important so there is there has been consistent reduction in the investment rate so what is this reduction look at this data this is how the reduction is happening in the investment okay so public investment has remained reasonably stagnant private investment private investment has little reduced okay but what is a bigger reduction is household investment household investment is reduced drastically so from some around 16 percentage to 11 percentage this is a huge reduction in this household you can say part so investment is also going down remember that we need more investment with more investment economic activities are growing up moving towards now we have understood how gdp is affected through one the sector wise and number two by factor wise okay now we talk about how governments finances are managed in the sense what kind of revenues they are you can say looking at and what kind of expenditure they got so here the data on central government finances are available from november 2017 and it said that the revenue front there are three important trends which are coming number 1 direct tax collections are on track positive thing that government is getting money non tax revenues have underperformed bad idea non debt capital receipts mainly proceeds from disinvestments are also doing well so overall revenue coming to the government is showing positive things so the idea is the growth in direct tax collection is really high whatever was the expectation usse better hua there is an eventual outcome of indirect taxes because of the arrival of gst theek hai and it will also give lot of benefit so overall revenue wise government is in a better position now let's talk about expenditure theek hai so what is our total expenditure government expenditure has increased and that too increased by 14.9 percentage compared to 12.6 percentage previous year revenue expenditure is also grew by 13 percentage while capital expenditure grew by 29 percentage so this growth in expenditure huge growth huge growth will definitely create a trouble two troubles one in a long run it will create you can say fiscal deficit in a short run current account deficit 
सो बोथ वेज पब्लिक फाइनेंसिस आर इन अ प्रॉब्लम ठीक है सो लेट्स सी हाउ पब्लिक फाइनेंसिस आर अफेक्टेड सो स्टेट्स विच आर टारगेटेड टू कॉन्सोलिडेटेड इन द करंट ईयर आफ्टर दिस उदय लेड एबरेशन इन दर फिजिकल बैलेंसिस फॉर द प्रीवियस टू ईयर पिछले दो सालों में जो उदय स्कीम जो लगाई गई थी है ना दैट इज उज्वल डिस्कॉम लेकिन से स्कीम uh, उस स्कीम के द्वारा क्या हुआ था ज्यादातर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट की जो फिजिकल सिचुएशन uh, थी वो बर्बाद होने लगी थी ठीक है एंड अब वो चीज खत्म हो चुकी है एंड देन देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट द रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स विल बी कीपिंग इन पेस विथ वॉट देंटर इज डूइंग इफ इंडिकेशन टिल नवंबर ट्वेंटी आर होल्ड राइट फिजिकल डेफिसिट टारगेट फॉर द करंट ईयर मे बी विद इन द रीच for the states theek okay. hai so with this expected revenue from gst becoming increasingly clearer the central government as well as state government may possibly plan their budget in a proper manner so that is where the public finance is coming public finance remember that we talked about that in government's expenditures are more revenues less so that's a problem so it is expected that expenditure to be less and revenue to be improved more now we talk about how external factors are affecting our indian economy so global economy has been gathering pace and it is growing possibly growing at some around 3 percentage 4 percentage theek hai world trade volume has also going is going to improve commodity prices are also expected to grow and in contrast to decline in the last few years so with this increase in all these activities indian economy possibly will get a lot of advantage remember one important part in the external sector india has continued to remain very strong if external sectors are not conducive to the economy still indian economy was doing wonderfully well so so far balance of payment situations have continued to be very comfortable the negative part is current account deficit is 1.8 percentage of gdp and look at this merchant exports have increased by 12 percent that's a very good thing net service receipt is grew by this and net foreign investment is grew so all these things are very positive for our economy but uske samne imports thode pareshani mein hai let's see certain data so here exports imports and trade deficit so this green line is called trade deficit theek hai wo itna trade deficit in us billion dollar mein dekh rakha hua hai theek hai aap dekhe exports ek taraf grow kar raha tha aur abhi kariban 2017 18 mein wo bilkul decline karne wala hai par import bhi decline karne wala hai par import hamesha export se zyada rahega and therefore country will have so this kind of trade deficit okay so that is where the number one issue let's talk about how foreign exchange reserves are helping us india's foreign exchange reserve has achieved a very big height some around 414 billion dollar by some around 12 january 2018 so that is a good figure hai na this is the figure available to you so this is some around you can say with lot of foreign exchange reserve we have lot of advantage more importantly our indian rupee has remained stable vis-a-vis -vis dollar in the past few years look at 2011-12 standard deviation with respect to dollar was very high what is the meaning of standard deviation standard deviation the meaning would be the rupee is not stable vis-a-vis -vis this dollar now with reduction in standard deviation to such a low level tells that indian again say rupee will be reasonably stable so that means it is very predictable scenario for exports and imports for india okay so that is a very good news okay and let's talk about what is our external debt our external debt has increased by 5.1 percentage which is some around 495 billion dollar and this increase in long term debt was primarily due to increase in foreign portfolio investment has been included in our commercial borrowing okay while short term debt also grew by 5.4 percentage and it is due to increase in trade related credit okay so that is how external you can say debt has increased so the share of government debt in total debt has increased which has reached to 21.6 percentage and uh, it was earlier at 19.4 percentage while foreign exchange reserve is covering this external debt because we have more foreign exchange reserve it is covering up this particular 
part and our trade policies are also working in tandem with this there are two important development in trade policy which has been announced which was mid term review of foreign trade policy and a recent multilateral uh, negotiations of wto has helped us so these were some of the developments on trade on the logistic front and anti dumping measure and thereby thereby india is going to get some advantage on the external front beside all this in december 2017 a special package for employment generation in leather and footwear sector has been approved logistic improvement will have a big impact on our export related part and possibly indian logistic market will reach to this 215 billion dollar remember logistics has been now put into industrial sector and thereby logistics sectors are going to get a lot of advantage so this is how the external sectors are so with this let's now focus on what is a prospects for growth in 2018 and 19 so our arvind subramaniam said that this 1718 we are going to grow by 6.5 percentage okay and the growth during 18 19 could be reasonably higher okay so there are number of factors number one positive side imf world economic outlook they say india is going to grow up they are saying indian economy will be growing at a faster rate number one okay number two uh, remittances have also shown a good sign of positive part that the money which is coming from the foreign to india this has also shown a positive factor okay and also this can be expected to provide further boost to india's exports so indian exports is going to grow in a good way so the prospects for growth is positive for 18 19 and possibly we may touch to 7 to 7.5 percentage of growth in 2000 against 19 18 so with this we go and talk about what are the sectoral developments you can say available now here we are going to go very fast because now we will talk about sectoral against a development and all the sectoral development will be discussed in detail in the other you can say part so i'll just touch important points on this issues number 1 agriculture and allied sector okay agriculture and allied sector growth has decreased okay however this decline share does not undermine the significance of this sector because there are large number of people who are employed in it there are large number of people who are dependent on livelihood and food security of our country depends on this so the share of livestock has improved in agriculture so that means though agriculture you can say impact on the gdp has reduced but there is a good possibility that if we do some structural part in our agriculture then agriculture has a potential to provide good growth of our indian economy coming to sector number 2 which is called industrial corporate and infrastructural so index of industrial production iip which gives data about how industry is growing so it says that it has output has been increased by 3.2 percentage compared to previous year this was a composite effect of growth in electricity generation as well as growth in mining and manufacturing so that way it is improving more importantly india has also reached to a very good position in ease of doing business in world bank report as well as moody ne jo apni rating batayi thi usme india bwa 3 se bwa 2 pe pahuncha hai with this structure of gst improvement and so many other reforms possibly industrial sectors are going to give lot of advantage for indian economy in future few other things okay if we talk about steel sector by primarily india is getting lot of trouble from china south korea and ukraine because they are sending very cheap steel and that is creating lot of trouble so india has put customs duty also impose anti dumping duty and a minimum import price laga di hai to ye sab cheezon ke dwara there may be a possibility that the steel sector would possibly we can say get revived okay similarly msme which is playing a very crucial role in a large scale employment opportunity in india government of india has come up with a pradhan mantri mudra yojana and it is basically revamped and being provided in a big way so possibly in the rural and the backward area this msme development may possibly give lot of advantage and if we talk about textile and apparel sector recently cabinet has announced 6000 crore package 
for this and and due to which this ready made garment sector has improved in a big way so you might have seen lot of ready made garment you can say uh, factories are getting lot of advantage out of this if you talk about leather sector recently and uh, there is a support of 2600 crore amount has been provided and possibly that is you can say improving the employment related part if you talk about gems and jewelry sector it is one of the largest exporter of gems and jewelry and it has to be improved by against a good amount earlier it was improved only by 0.7 percentage now in 1617 it is improved by 12.8 percentage so there are certain constraints that would require training in jewelry designing setting up of hallmark centers and few other thing and thereby it will definitely grow if you look at infrastructure sector government is coming up national highways state highways bharat mala pari yojana there is national waterway kind of thing so all those things will be definitely giving benefit in terms of roads okay if we talk about few other part like telecom in india we have a bharat net project which is coming up digital india which is aiming at digital economy that is some around you can say 1207 million subscribers are available and therefore to give lot of support to those subscribers will give lot of benefit civil aviation is getting support more and more number of passengers are traveling through you can say plane and more and more cities are coming under this airport scheme called udan that is ure desh ka aam nagrik so that way it is gaining benefit power has you can say we develop a good support called discom assurance yojana udai aur us udai ke dwara we have developed a good support for power generation in 2017 that is 3 lakh 30000 megawatt you can say power plant has been developed compared to previous year it has improved in a big way we are also bringing up a new scheme called sobhagya pradhan mantri sahaj bijli har ghar yojana har ghar mein bijli dene ka target hai to iske dwara agar ab har ek ke ghar mein electricity aayegi gaon gaon mein electricity aayegi to electricity aane se logo ka kaam karne ka tarika badlega tez hoga production zyada badhega that's the advantage okay service sector theek hai this service sector has a big impact on this you can say gdp it has more than 55 percentage contribution theek hai and it is going to grow in a big way us purpose ke liye kafi zyada improvement karne ki zarurat padti hai so bhaiya kya kya cheez hai bhai social infrastructure badhao usse service sector badhne ki sambhavna badh jati hai government is working hard on social infrastructure so government has increased their expenditure government has increased their expenditure theek hai that is 5.8 percentage and 6.6 percentage of gdp utna zyada unhone badhaya hai theek hai agar hum baat kare education ka status kya hai that is you can say right to education ki agar hum baat kare that's a very good indicator and it is showing the effectiveness of universalization of education in most of the states it also pupil teacher ratio has also improved gender parity index also reflects this disparity of girls with service boys in the excess of education and that has been shown positive things so consistent efforts by government of beti padhao beti bachao kafi zyada enrollment hua hai primary or secondary skill education mein par abhi bhi higher education mein ye jo disparity hai abhi bhi prevalent hai if we talk about health related part so there is a report called india health of nation states has for the first time provided comprehensive set of finding on the distribution of diseases across the you can say states so malnutrition is still remain the important risk factor which is 14.6 percentage so that is creating trouble and out of the total disease burden in india 33 percentage was due to communicable maternal neonatal nutritional disease which can be controlled which can be controlled ठीक है, the contribution of non-communicable disease has increased. ठीक है, so India has to work hard and more importantly, Swachh Bharat Mission has to be promoted in a big way. If we are able to promote Swachh Bharat Mission, possibly the health status will automatically improve. Swachh Bharat, we have targeted that many states will become open defecation free, and for that we got lot of support from international agencies like. World Bank, ठीक है. So as per the baseline survey conducted by Ministry of Drinking and Water Sanitation, 55 crore persons were defecating in open in 2014. Now it has declined to 
25 crore so that way it is going on a big way and now we talk about the labor reform so employment sector in india has a biggest challenge in terms of the structure in terms of giving training in terms of giving employment skill shortages labor market are not very organized so the old labor laws have to be improved and there is a proposal that wages letter law will come industrial regulation letter law will come social security welfare letter law and safety and working conditions letter laws will come and through which possibly this you can say activities will improve and the happiness of the workers will be improved so this are the sectoral development this is the summary of the first chapter i hope this is comfortable for you though it was a little long but this is needed for the understanding purpose so do not forget to watch our next videos on this issues all the best